YouTube, this is the top 16, the full top 16. Top eight grand finale will be in a separate video. By liking, commenting, subscribing, watching as long of the video as you can, that greatly supports us. With that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Starting off with our unicorn special summon, grabbing our birth, which is limited to one for some wild reason. What the heck is that? We're gonna be using up our normal summon to be searching for the car turbo. Card Turbo Special Summoning if we control a Wind Monster, as we now make a Baron de Flore. Okay, Birth reborning the Cash Tira Scare Claw. Special Summoning the Take Tomborg to tribute itself to summon from the deck a Den Duke. Den Duke Kid reborn from the graveyard. We're going to be summoning Hagoita. Den Duke, I should say, instead of reborn from the graveyard, it banished itself to summon another monster from the graveyard. As we now put these two to the graveyard for a level 8 Synchro, which is going to be our Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon Monster Negate. On top of that, we have Baron DeFloor Omni Negate. So double disruption plus our Max C. Let's go. We have Droplet to completely negate both of them. Max C in the draw phase. Ash is going to negate. Do we negate the negate? Crystal Wing mate, negate the negate. Imperm, negate the negate, negate. Baron DeFloor. Negate the negate, negating the negate, negate, negate. Drop lit, drop the lit. Negate the negate, negate, negating a negate, negating the negate, negate, negated. Negate. Wait, we didn't negate the crystal wing. We negate the cash tier unicorn instead, because the imperm was negating the negate of the negate on negate. Negate, got him. No max C, and just like that, we are in the full clear triple monster negate. Do we have lethal? Are we reflecting battle damage here? Are we Zeusing the field? What are we doing? Victinium, start cooking. Summoning from the hand, Canary reborning a monster from the graveyard. We're locked into Xyz summoning only. We have double recital Starling. We're gonna detach a material. We already used up our normal summon, grabbing a Nerval from our deck as we now turn this into a utopic Draco future, okay? Now making this, we'll be able to negate a monster and take control of it. Big enough to take out the unicorn. As we now turn this into a Zeus to wipe up the entire field. How big's the Zeus? Double field wipe. End phase wiping. It's a small detail, but it plays around in effect Veiler. You activate, they then chain Veiler, you're then sad. Wait till the end phase with toggle on, then wipe the field. It's, a, it's very small, but you will lose to Veiler sometimes. Ooh, small world. Uh, how's this gonna work out? We're gonna banish for anything we want, right? Banishing a kaiju to grab the <laughs> at three terror top. So you wanna see what Speedroid could do with one card? Well, you're not gonna see that because Zeus will wipe it up, but we'll see what they are attempting to do. Grabbing the marble machine. When do we Zeus get wipe in? The yo-yo is here, but it cannot be normal summoned. If you make the link monster that allows an additional summon, it could have then summoned. That was the play we were making. Yeah, okay. 6250 life, can we perform lethal? We got the h Rays Velgler into the Axis Code Talker plus the Zeus, which is going to be 8,000 damage lethal. Taking this into a game two, just like that, Tri Brigade Lyra Lusk winning. Oh my gosh, why'd you do that? Lethal damage. Heh, <laughs> I had Maxi and didn't even need it. All right. What we got? Opening up with the Unicorn. We did not max C early because we were playing around Gamma. Was it correct to play around Gamma after seeing that they're playing more Cash Tira and their deck beyond the Fenrir? We're now gonna be normal summoning our Marble, searching for the Car Turbo. Now Car Turbo is gonna special summon if we control a Wind. And now it's time to whip out that max C. A deck in Macedo is generally only as good as it could play under max C. How well do we play under max C? Baron to floor end, not bad. They do get to draw two though. So draw one, draw two, Baron to floor, and uh, you know, to be fair, that wasn't all Speedroid. That was a unicorn helping it out. Let's see what's going on now. We have Baron to floor negating the activation of being able to special summon a Leer Lusk from the hand. Not happening. Now the Cobalt wants to be summoned from the hand because when special summon, it gets to search. Now the duplicate. What the heck was that, mate? Banish a win from the graveyard, target a monster upon controls, return it to the hand. And we can't activate anything. 
What, if this card's special summoned, if this card is special summoned, what are we gonna do? We have nothing on the field. Now, can we whip out some big speedroid plays? Small world with max seed. Does that search for anything relevant? Duplicate is activating. What is it trying to do from the graveyard here? You, if this card's in the graveyard, you could target a monster on the field. You could reduce its level and then special summon a tuner token to then link with. We're gonna be chaining the max seed to that. But we could just go in for lethal, right? Oh, we're summoning itself at, instead of a token. Ash is going to be negating the small world, banishing the maxi from the hand here. It's good that you don't have to banish as a cost. It's as an effect, so you don't lose the card in your hand if it's negated. Now we got the rubber band shooter. Let's get shooting. Speedroid it up. We're gonna be banishing a monster from the extra deck. We're gonna be revealing from the deck, randomly adding one to the hand. We got the terror top. Tear top searching for the Daiko Duke. Daiko Duke's gonna be additionally normal summon due to the band shooter. We're gonna card tuber, card tuber, boost up the field, but boosted. We can't see the attacks here. What the heck? It doesn't show the but boost. The but boost is plus 800 to the entire field for game, all under max C. Very well done. How well does Speedroid do going second? Max C early, Ash or called by. If you were to call by the Max C, that would also stop your own Max C. You definitely want to consider that. So otherwise, if we did not have Max C, using called by maybe would have been better to hold your Ash for other plays like the Speedroid Wheel. We are going to be using our Fractal, which was semi-limited not too long ago, sending Kit. Kit sent Nerval. Nerval and sent to the Graveyard searching for another Fractal. We're going to use Karas. We don't use up our normal summon. Special summoning itself, banishing four cards from the graveyard into Sheree Omen. This card's known for on someone banishing a card in the field, but even better, when sent to the graveyard, it's now a combo starter. It's gonna search the deck for a monster where its levels is equal to or less than the amount of monsters banished. We're gonna grab the Cobalt Sparrow when special summoned through the effect of the Therajit. We have now finally used up our normal summon to make our recital. Robin is going to be large and in charge at four materials. It could activate its effect as many materials it has. That's how many activations. If the opponent special summons, return it back to the hand. Do it again over and over. So that's four disruptions on Robin, a monster negate on the Draco future. We got the droplet, which we're going to keep it as a hidden negate. Now the Samorg will be giving us another negate. I believe we're going to be summoning. Oh, we did not. What happened to the Apex Avian? Okay. Only five negates plus a droplet, and we have to do it all through a max C. Let's go. Five disruptions, speedroid wheel. This is gonna be summoning from the deck here. Robin's gonna spin back just one of them. Roll the four, so we're gonna summon one, two. Robin could spin back one of them. We still have our normal summon here. So Daiko Duke, back to the hand. We have four more disruptions. Small world get search in. Banishing the Drone Lockbird from the deck to give us a Kaiju. Yes. Kaijuing, now we only have one disruption, plus the, dro the Droplet. So we are ready with the Monster Negate. Marble Machine is going to get negated. Negate and take control, making it so you cannot perform your Link Summon. We have Card Turbo, which could Special Summon and still Link. But now we have the Hidden Droplet. Droplet's gonna screw up our entire day. The band shooter is going to be activating. We're gonna draw Lockbird early on the card turbo, which would have boosted up the band shooter. Also could have been summoned with the Dyke Duke. Where's the Dyke Duke? Oh, it's already banished, so that's not gonna even work. Goodbye to the card turbo, Nova boost. And just like that, we are activating the effect to reveal two speedroids, and then you're gonna add one of them to your hand and then additionally summon it. So we're not only negating the add, we're negating the additional summon and I believe that's the end of our turn. <laughs> we played through every disruption though. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, if I were the speedroid player, I'd be happy losing that way. We didn't lose like a loser, we lost like a winner. That was it. every disruption we played through it and then we still lost though. All right, let's hop in another one. We don't have Maxi to keep him in check, which makes this the best deck. 
Let's speed on through this and not pretend like we know what's going on. Said not pendulum. Oh, uh, hmm. That's. I'm pretty sure they do more than that. What the heck? Couldn't we? I, I mean, didn't we just screw this up? Couldn't Wisdom Eye get whatever scale and we could at least harmonizing into a Baron to floor, like at minimum? I don't. I. Yeah. You know, TTK is a top tier pendulum player. And even the top tier will make mistakes. Damn. Master Rule 6 will let you replace a pendulum scale with another pendulum scale from the hand. Believe it. All right. We have branded fusion. No disruption whatsoever. Let's go. Would that break pendulum? Albion activating the fuse from the hand, field, or grave, banishing to come forth and summon our Lubellion. Yeah, let's just, let's go to game. Actually, I think he did that on purpose. He wanted to throw game one just to gather information on their deck and then clap them up game two and three. Yes. Valent world blocking and permanence, blocking uh, evenly match if you were to even be playing that. I'm not sure how popular evenly match is. Remember how popular it used to be though? When Sprite was the most popular deck and Tier Limit also, right? That was great against them because the Celiac requires a Tier Limit on the field, so we were evenly matching like crazy. Now I don't think it's really anywhere to be seen. Astrograph Sorcerer is limited to one here. Would this really be a big boost if we unlimited? Probably, because it's not hard once per turn. You just activate all of them. We are, well, you can't summon, trigger all of them from the hand. There is a, it's kind of a weird Yu-Gi-Oh ruling. If you have multiple monsters in the hand that triggered a special summon, you could only activate one of them. I'm sure it's in the rule book somewhere, but uh, that is the rule. It's a trust me, bro. That's just how it works. We have Celine Navidad special summoning a spellcaster from the hand or grave Apollo USA. Let's go. Baboon rulings. It's just how it is. Electromite pop in the field spell so that the opponent does not use the field spell against us. We're going to link them off into a Sprite Elf. This is what I talked about. One of the main uses of Promethean locking you into fire only. So what happens here is if the opponent special summons a monster, we could destroy that monster with the Promethean Princess. We could also negate with Baron to floor, and we have double monster negate with the Apollo USA, and we could Pendulum Graph get pop in. So we have about five disruptions to play through. Branded is one of the decks that could play through five disruptions, surely. Albion's gonna be drawing a card here by sending Retribution. Drawing into a Branded Fusion! What the heck was that? We're not negating. We're not negating. No negate, mate. Why not negate? I'll tell you why. If Baron de Floor were to negate the Branded Fusion, you actually made a big mistake. And I know a lot of you would have made this mistake, and I'm going to tell you why it's a mistake. If you had Ash, you Ash. If you have Baron, you don't Baron. Because in this situation, negating the activation of the Branded Fusion, while there's a Retribution in the grave, this says add it back to the hand, and guess what? It's activatable again. So public information, you would negate the activation and they would just activate it again. So very well done, understanding that. We have Albion, which is not being chain link blocked by anything, activating when sent to the graveyard, so Apollo will be able to negate, but the Mercurial will negate the negate. Baron of Flow will negate the negate, negating the negate. Negate! The Mercurial. And then Albion is now negated. And we still have the Pendulum Graph, and we have another Apollo say, and we have the Promethean. So Promethean's waiting to destroy. We're going to be summoning the Lubellion. Do we Promethean right now, right? Promethean, let's go! Yes! Pop an Electromite, pop in the Lubellion, but called by is going to negate the Promethean destruction. So now we have Apollo and Pendulum Graph. We have Monster Negate and we have Destroy. We're going to Pendulum Graph. We're going to get popping. And now we just have Apollo USA. Triggering Electromite to draw a card here. Maybe we could draw into a Hand Trap. Yeah. That's not the draw, that's the search, as we randomly draw into a monkey board. Okay. Apollo with the final negate, negating Albion during the end phase, attempting to add or set up. Now, 
We could, if we want to, we could add an opening with the toggle on, and then you could opening discard Albion, summon a Quem, Quem could send, and then, you know, Quem's gonna be able to reborn something like an Albaz during the opponent's turn, but you would want a monster or any card in the hand to be able to discard to activate the Albaz. Get ready. Baron to floor, main phase, not standby phase, returning back in the action deck. We're popping a card, Pendulum Graph, wiping out the face down card, triggering the Electromite to draw a card, triggering the Star Pendulum Graph to search for a card, Tragedy searching for a card that's not going to be activatable during the opponent's turn. There's the Quem, which is uh, one to two of. A lot of people are playing it at just one and doing fine. There are so many ways to get to it. Got the Wisdom Eye, the Purple Poison. If Purple Poison gets destroyed, you get to destroy a card in the field, so it combos up with a Time Pendulum Graph to take out more than one card. And just like that, we have over 9,000 damage. I told you, we threw Game 1 on purpose to wipe out the Fool for Game 2 and 3. Let's do it. You like 2, Quem? You like Quemmin? Branded versus Pendulum, post banless, fully abiding by it. Every card that's unlimited is unlimited. We also got the bans and restrictions. No Chaos Ruler today. I heard that Dragon Link is in fact in the top 16. Hopefully I was not lied to. And now we are going into our Gangrenol. Trigger in the tragedy being sent to the graveyard, searching for a Despia monster. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Gangrenol sending from the deck or extra decks of the grave, setting up the puppet lock. This is going to be something. We are negating not branded fusion. We're using it on the branded and high spirits, which will search for a fallen Albaz monster and send an extra deck monster to the grave. It's so important for that to resolve that we're going to finger the ash and negate. I do not think so. Now, thankfully, we don't have an ash of our own that will be negated on the next turn as we grab our Albaz monster, as I said. Quem being triggered, reborning the Cartesia from the graveyard. Serenir sending a branded spell or trap or Lubellion from the deck to the grave. That's going to be a retribution to recycle. And now with the Cartesia, we could fuse during the opponent's turn. We could fuse with something like a Mirror Jade, or we could fuse into the Sanctifier Dragon. Probably making Sanctifier Dragon here. We're actually going to send the Cartesia in the grave for the Albion Sanctifier right here, right now. Now, with the Albion setting up during the end phase, Branded Banishment, we don't have the Branded Law set up. So this is it. Can we stop it? When are we summoning the Puppet? Huh? Can we Puppet? We, we can. Wait, where's the Puppet? Yeah, Puppet. Okay, we're waiting. Now, you got the Pendulum Scales before the Pendulum Summon. Give them the Puppet, locking them out from Special Summoning for the rest of the turn. Boom, immediately applied. Even if you get rid of the gimmick puppet, you still can't special summon for the rest of the turn. We're going to chain Cartesia, fusion summon into what exactly? That looks like a Dragos Topelia to me. Or a Masquerade. You're going to burn for 600 on every effect activation. Surely we could still set up some disruption, right? We're setting up the Valent Worlds. We got the Perform Pound, the same column as the Masquerade to push it into the back row. Setting up the double iris, which will be popping itself, triggering the star pendulum graph and the iris to get searching. So we are going to have the pendulum graph trap to get popping at least. So we're not completely useless. The purple poison could also double pop. We're going to pop right now. The purple poison will be activating in the battle phase. Activate, pop itself, but boost up the monster. Wait, purple poison popping the field spell instead. We can't target the Albion, so I guess that would have been the better thing to pop here. That was a nice little bit boost. And there we go. We have pop one during the opponent's turn. I, yeah, I guess we had to get rid of the Valent Field spell, otherwise they would use it against us. Is this enough, though? Ash is no longer negated by the called by. We are in a simplified game state where this could be worth negating. Does not want the ability to search for a Fallen Albaz monster plus trigger a fusion monster effect in the grave. To battle we go. Time Pendulum Graph wiping out the Cartesia again. For some reason, Sanctifier can't be targeted. Why did they add that to this monster? Puppet's going to get recycled if it's not banished. <laughs> just like that, I puppet lock you again and again and again. I just do it again. Damn immediately applied cannot special summon it's insanity 
We got the Duelist Alliance grabbing the Double Iris. Purple Poison is here. Luster pop the poison, trigger the poison to pop a card in the fields. Of course, can't pop the Sanctifier. Let's take out that Quem instead. Pop it over D Barrier, fight me. It is super toxic. What the hell? And just being able to continually do it. Purple Poison is ready to be used with the Pendulum Graph, so we're going to be able to pop two cards. So TTK putting up a great fight despite getting puppeted every single turn. Kit's going to Special Summon, recycling a branded spell or trap from the Grave Banisher deck back to our hand, returning back that Mercurier, and now we got our branded Fusion play, setting up with Albion. The Bellion's going to tribute the Albion to set up a branded Regain or branded Beast, so we're going to see what we do there. Banishing, double dark, double dragon for the Barlord Furious to pop any card on the field. Triggering the Star Pendulum Graph, searching for a Black Fang within the damage step, putting the puppet back into our graveyard. Should this at least say that when the monsters summoned through this effect leave the field, they get banished? Something? Would that like be a good thing? Would you be able to abuse that? I don't know. I think that that should be in the effect. 3k to the face, follow up tragedy. I, are there a lot of cards that say something like that? This deal, Lubelli in the main phase two, activating to set up that branded regained. We have not used our time pendulum graph yet. You didn't force us to activate it. You didn't threaten lethal. And the issue is when we activate the pendulum graph, he could chain Borlord Furious to stop it by popping it in response to its activation. Setting up, setting up. And I'm, we're gonna get puppeted a third freaking time. I don't think I've ever seen triple puppet in one game. How have you not won by now? That's it. <laughs> Here's the puppet. I could fuse with your puppet with Albaz and you still can't special summon. Oh my gosh, he's doing it. Ain't no way. <laughs> this is stupid. Puppet's gone, but you still can't special summon. Unfreaking believable. You can't special and I have a Mirror Jade. That's the trade offer. Well, the Time Pendulum Graph is locked down by the Furious Dragon. Black Fang going in onto the Sanctifier. We're going to use Purple Poison in the damage step, by the way, to take out the Furious, which means this is not going to cause a replay. We have to commit to this attack. Oh, protected by Branded Opening. Yeah, I'm out of here. Get the hell out of here with your puppet, mate. Damn. Puppet for three turns. Lily is going to be shut off by the Dimension Shifter. So we're waiting for a spell card activation as the Shifter will... The problem here is you could still sneak a spell card into the graveyard against Shifter. So when Shifter's activated, you just chain, discard a card, or you could do it right now. If you activate discard, you will ensure that Lily is going to be able to exceed. Discard, uh, well, actually on resolution. So uh, incorrect, incorrect. It's not a cost to discard. It is an effect to discard. That's why the Dark Worlds work. So this is where you would have another purely spell. You chain activate it to the shifter, then discard before the shifter resolves. Then the Lily can activate. But because our cards are being limited and semi-limited so much, we're much less frequently opening up more than one purely card to be activating in the hand. So we actually can't counter the shifter. We'll be activating still. And on the chain link resolution, both of these cards are gonna be banished even though we activated it after the shifter's activation. So we are, Lily is now trash. Ash is going to be negating the max C. And we are solely reliant on regular purely hitting a good spell to become an exceed with. What's that going to be? Double purely. Wait, that does, uh, yeah, actually, okay, that does work. It's going to be six different cards. Let's go. Huh? Huh? Oh, that's not good. Okay, try again, try again, try again. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's good. We got beauty. Sure. Very well done. So we're going to be able to go, and we have another try with the Princess Sprite Mill, the top card of the spell. Nope, it's banished. Triple Tactics Talent. Oh, we're even drawing. We're drawing more. Okay, we got beauty. We got beauty. Going into the beauty play here, we have Triple Tactics Thrust into Purely Leap. 
that's also pretty good. Despite getting Dimension Shiftered, we are still going to put up some decent disruptions here. We're going to be main phase two sucking that up so we could have the purely leapy even uh, giving us a larger X purely nor. Yes. Yep. Negate a monster plus double spin. And Zeus, we have a ton of disruptions. One, two, three, four disruptions. Ooh, Kurikara. If we could get him to negate, then Kurikara is going to attribute it before they could even activate the purely leap. So he has to negate, then purely leap right away to play around Kurikara. And who's going to do that? Maybe you should actually do so. I, well, I just revealed that I have Kurikara. Now you know. And the problem with Zeus being a disruption is it wipes out your entire field. So there's disruption number one. We are using the monster negates. On the resolution, we have to purely leap or the curry car is going to tribute the beauty and then we lose out on two disruptions. There you go. Toggle on. But you get flipped face down, stopping the purely leap. So from three disruptions now down to one. That completely counters that. Wow. Get flipping. And now we just have Zeus. Oh, no way. Oh, it's negated. It's negated. It's negated uh, by the beauty. So, uh, yeah, we're not uh, wiping that. Okay. Summon Link off into the Cerberus. Cerberus is actually going to be taking out the Zeus. No, not taking out the Zeus. Huh? Okay. Why didn't we? Uh, yeah, no. Okay, sure. Deal with the purely exceed while it's face down before it flips back up. The My Friend purely does not trigger if the card was face down when it leaves the field. So, yeah, you know, okay. It's just like we pretty much lose this game anyway. Let's just see what happens. Let's speed this up. Zeus, get wiping, cleaning up the field. Lily into the street. We're going to exceed with the graveyard into a plump. That is our one delicious memory. I was talking about how if this one delicious memory gets banished, it's gone. How are you going to interact with it again? Are all the cats banished? The double... We, we still have another Lily that's under... So all three Lilies are gone. And all two purelies are banished and in the grave. So the cat, there's no more cats in the deck. That was the final kitty. Very nice. Good job, purely. Let's hop into game number two. Raisin against Imperm. Now, of course, we see Imperm on Raisin all the time, but as soon as they have a Caesar or Borger in the hand, now we don't Imperm it because we're never going to see it actually dodge an impermanence. Reveal the Jalong, trigger, come forth, and special. We're going to link this off into the Rock of the Vanquisher. Rock of the Vanquisher could get impermed here. Very good. Just holding on to the imperm. Could even save it for the draw phase of the next turn to be used on the rock. We're on summon number three. That Nibiru is possibly coming. I think so. Hold up. Caesar banished. A lot of decks play too. So we surely have another one. Reveal to fire, grabbing the Dust Devil, Flippage. Okay, Snow Devil will be not doing much so far. Dust Devil will flip a monster face down. Purely reveal the top three, get ready to Dust Devil it face down here. The great thing about using spell and trap cards for disruption instead of monsters is the TTT will not be activatable. So how long can we get by without playing into the TTT? Be limited to one delicious memory, making the Rock of the Vanquisher indestructible by battle. As we now link this off into Anima, looks like we misplaced our monster against a level one deck. Do not put your monster behind the extra monster zone because this is a play. We are going to be chaining everything now, playing right into that triple tactics talent. And I feel like if your opponent discards a TTT, I'm not trying to be biased here. That's got to mean that they have another one in the hand. And if they don't have another one in the hand, then their hand is just insane. So you should be afraid no matter what if they discard a TTT. And now we're playing right into it. Come forth and summon that Raisin, searching for a mad love here. Raisin activating. Come to us, Caesar Valius. As we now, Ani must suck up the Jow Long. Thank you for playing into the TTT as we now take control of your raisin it's non-target so if we were to chain 
return the Raisin Summon, then the newly summoned monster before it could even activate will be taken control of. So that is a really good counter. And a lot of people have been asking me, how do you beat Vanquish Soul? TTT is the way because of only activatable in the main phase, only activatable in the main phase. They're gonna play right into it. Come forth and summon our Purely. Look at the top three, come to me. Our Purely Street making our newly special summon Purely's completely untargetable. Now we still have something. We do have the Snow Devil, which could destroy the entire field. The problem with destroying the field is triggering the My Friend Purely, which do we activate the quick play spells during the end phase? Boom, 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 wiping up the entire field, including our own link, triggering the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, we're scooping. <laughs> nope. We could have added back the happy, add back delicious. We could activate happy, summon a monster, and then activate delicious, make that monster indestructible by battle. And then when they try to attack, oh, oh we timed out. <laughs> okay. So we had the option of whatever we summon, we could have made it indestructible by battle or card effect. Probably battle would be the better one, but uh, yeah, let's just get out of that. Dimension Shifter. This is where we have the opportunity to chain Sleepy, discard Happy, and then Lily can become happy. Is that uh, something we'd even care to do? No, we don't care to do that. If we had a better card like Beauty, then I believe we would have done that. If we could have discarded that, possibly. But even if we just keep it in the hand, the regular purely could still copy it from the hand. It is getting banished. I mean, if we were going to do that, we should have done that in response to Shifter, and it would have at least, at least been in the grave. Okay. And YOLO Pretty Memory, which is semi-limited, yet we still hit it off the top of the deck. We got beauty, monster negate. Do a room tour, we could do something like that maybe. We have monster negate plus ash. Two disruptions, ash on the stake, your soul, easy. There can be only one of there can be only one. Yeah, he opened it up. Yup, we are abiding by that new ban list. Mad love get searching, beauty get negating. Okay. Are we, we're not going to win off of there could be only one, right? That would be ridiculous. I hate that this floodgate's still playable at one. Why not just ban it? Are you freaking kidding me? To battle we go. Dr. Mad Love. We're going to exceed this up into our Zeus play. Zeus is going to be wiping up the entire field here. Not yet. Just wait. We'll wait. We'll wait it. Dimension Shifter, rip, <laughs> that's no good. We're gonna have to end this duel soon. Pot of Prosperity, I, you know, should we attack first? Because this like ensures that we're not gonna lethal, right? Can we really deal more than 3000 damage after activating this? We gotta get that life points down. We have to end this game soon. Let's get revealing. Come to us, Lily. Then we're gonna wipe the field here. Wipe it up, follow up with the Lily. And now let's see what we can build. We have half battle damage, so don't get excited for lethal. Randomly adding the Sleepy, summoning the Purely. Randomly reveal the top three. Come to me, my friend Purely, which you already have one, so that's not that great. We're making an E Purely Beauty for Monster Negate. We're not making X Purely Nor. If you haven't noticed, the deck, it's much more difficult to summon it. So how good is Purely if you're not summoning X Purely Nor as consistently? We have a Field Wipe plus a Monster Negate. And uh, you know, this uh, this kind of sucks. We bricked up pretty bad. But that's what happens when you play Shifter and there could be only one. They could be bricks. They could win the duel, they could also lose the duel. You do take that chance. And just like that with enough for lethal damage. Fool! Good job to both of you. Appreciate both of you playing and doing well. Let's keep on going. So when do we Ash? Ashing Huggin is just amazing. There, there's no way they could have the field spell already in the hand, which was the case before. Now this is just the way. Boom, get him. 
They can't summon another hug in because the extra monster zone is blocked up. But, you know, they do have tip to still grab the field spell. But still, this is a very good search. They, uh, very good negate, that is, on the hug in. Sometimes they would still have the field spell after doing this, and it would be a bait. I, I can't believe we still have draw three even through Ash. That is incredible. Are we losing any crazy cards here? Grand opening, semi-limited. We lost to Ash, not that big of a deal. It is, what the heck? Orcist, Mech Knight, Runic. Okay, Galatea is here. We're gonna use the Harp Horror after sending it with the Dingursu to be special summoning from the deck a combat skeleton. Galatea is gonna be returning it back of the deck to be searching for an orchestrated return to now draw two cards. Discard, draw two. We're now gonna be making long Gursu. Nice and long, what is gonna be good here? This link card cannot be destroyed by card effects. You could target two of your banished machine monsters, shuffle them into the deck, but I mean, what is this gonna do? It doesn't really do much. We don't have the babble. We just have the runic cards. I guess we could trigger the field spell. We can't special summon a runic though, because it's blocking up the extra monsters and we have only one other runic card in the grave. This wasn't really a great turn one, if you ask me. Max C in the draw phase. Very nice. Alibur into the branded fusion. We do have Ash to negate. We did not call by the grave the Ash previously, so this does work. Very nice. Because the effect is negated, we cannot shuffle it back into the hand with the retribution to reuse it. That, that's it. We got Super Poly. Super Poly could fuse up with the field by discarding a card. We have the Nightmare sending a card from the deck to the graveyard, sending another harp, harp horror, harp horror, banishing a summon from the deck. Come forth and summon Gursu. Gursu sending from the deck to the graveyard a wand. Wand's gonna special summon a banished card. We're gonna use the combat skeleton to reborn the Galatea, to use the Galatea to exceed into Ding Gursu with a non-target send a card in the field to the grave. Now, whatever we super poly into, non-target Ding Gursu will be able to send it to the grave. Discard. Get fusion summoning. Using with the Dingursu and Alibur into the Masquerade. Only while fusion summoned and on the field does the opponent lose 600 per card effect activation. Alibur is going to be triggered, negating the Long Gursu for the rest of the turn here. Now we have Dark. If Dark attempts to, it can't do anything because it's pointing to nothing where it could summon a monster for the opponent's graveyard. We got the World Wand reborning the Combat Skeleton as we now attempt to Masquerade summon from the grave. We are chaining the Runic Slumber onto our own monster here. Come forth and summon. Okay, triggering the field spell to return to back of the deck. Doesn't the Slumber target the monster? The next time that monster would be destroyed by battle. It is not, also it cannot attack this turn. So I'm kind of, um, huh? Okay, sure. Albion sending from the decks of the graveyard a retribution and recycle that branded fusion, also drawing one, triggering the runic dispelling to randomly discard a card from the opponent's hand, also banishing a tragedy, triggering its effect to grab an Alubur. We're not normal summoning the Alubur, we're discarding to fuse of the opponent's field. We have the runic freezing curses to negate the fallen Albaz fusion summon as we chain runic smiting storm to banish four cards off the top of the deck, losing a one of branded in white. A one of Kit is now banished, which is a very important card against Runic to recycle your banished cards back to your hand. Retribution grabbing that branded fusion. How many Albazes are banished, if any? Looks like none are banished. We possibly have, I think, up to two more left in the deck. You should be playing three. Now we're playing against the Max C. Into the Albion branded dragon. Albion is going to be met with the Bestial Counter. This actually does counter it if you don't have another Albaz on the field hand or grave, but we do. So is this Baldrake a good play? We should probably just banish the Lubellion. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah that, that, we figured that out. We're like, yeah, you know what? That's not that good. We should just banish the Lubellion. Goodbye to Masquerade and Albaz going straight into the Mirror Jade for the non-target monster banish. We do have Flash Fire to destroy the Mirror Jade. We're gonna use the Baldrake to banish the Mirror Jade. We're gonna chain the brightest blazing branded king, which not targets, but on resolution, it's gonna choose the Mirror Jade to then negate every other card on the field. And if it's no longer on the field, are you able to negate the whole field? We'll choose the Albion instead. So let's see what it says. You choose the fusion 
and negate. So it, it looks like it still negates even if there's no fusion monster to choose. Or no, 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 it has to do both. It has to do both. So it is dependent on both. If it has nothing to choose, it does not negate. Mirror Jade with the non-target monster banish. Very well done before it gets destroyed as we don't have an opening to banish. Mirror Jade will activate to wipe out the field during the end phase. Baldrake did get banished. Activate. We could just get in some... Ba okay, that was a good way to get the Albion into the graveyard since the Lubellion was banished. So we can now search for and set up a branded banishment, which is going to re-summon the Mirror Jade from the grave back onto the field for non-target banishing again. Plus the Mercurier is going to be a monster negate. So we have double disruption off the banishment, possibly triple disruption as the banishment could fuse with the opponent's field. Oh boy. How are we playing around this? How are we going to do this? Okay, so just two disruption now. We're reborning the Mirror Jade. We're not going to be fusing with the fields. Come forth. Non-target monster banish. We don't have an out. Uh, we are fusing into a Lubellion. We're actually going to discard the Mercurier to go into what here? Are we? Yes, we are. Discard Mercurier. Chain Magna Hut banishing the Quem. Okay, so we can't fuse with the Quem. Quem is gone. We're making a Dragos Topelia. No, Furious Dragon, it looks like. So Furious Dragon and the Mirror Jade are our double disruption. We can non-target Monster Banish, which we're doing right now, banishing the Magna Hut off the field. And then the Furious Dragon can destroy anything. We could pop the field spell if it tries to trigger to draw cards. We are going to be reborning the Dingersu. Dingersu is going to activate to send a card on the field to the grave, also triggering our regain to return a card back in the deck to draw one. Do we deal with the Fountain? Because what if they draw into a Runic card? Then we're screwed, right? We lose. Goes for the regained. How about you draw nothing? You can't draw into a Runic card if I pop the card that's activating to draw. Send the Mirror Jade to the grave. Now the Mirror Jade will not activate to wipe out the field because it was not fusion summoned, but the Alubur will. Alubur is going to be targeting the Cartesia, negating it for the rest of the turn. We're going to link this off into Galatea. Galatea is going to be returning a banished monster back on the deck to set up a Crescendo, which is an Omni negate to be used on the next turn. Adding a Druid Swarm here. Rhysis, Blazing Branded King being added back to the hand during the end phase. Titan clad summoning an Albaz from the deck during the end phase to play around the Omni Negate Crescendo, which now will not be able to activate as we fuse with the opposing Galatea. This is public knowledge. You could have seen this play happen before it happened. None of this is random. You could look at the grave and go, okay, they could add, then summon, then discard, then fuse. Thus, this would be no good. Damn. Holy moly. That is the second Mirror Jade. Yep. Some people do play one. We still have the Furious Pop. We're going to Bistil Serenir, attempt to banish our own card. We're going to banish it instead. It will still get triggered to grab a Fallen Albaz monster. Do we have another Albaz in the deck? Probably. Yes, we do. On Summon, discard Serenir. Use with the Druid Swarm, but instead we're going to be banishing with the Mirror Jade. And just like that, 9,600 damage. What an epic duel this has been. Lethal damage. Damn. Damn. Swords Hole didn't win, nor did the player. Protos won last week. Okay, correction, thank you. I'm not saying that, I'm just repeating the chat. Ogin is here. We're going to be discarding to get searching for that Runic Fountain. We're going to have three Runic cards in the graveyard to draw three. We're going to be making a long Gursu. End the turn, and the Crescendo is activatable if we have an Orcus Link monster, even if it's not Galatea. So this does work. Branded Lost. We're going to be chaining Runic Tip. Are we triggering our field spell here to draw just one? Probably not. We may be waiting. We do have Runic Destruction. That is a good one. We're going to be using the Runic Destruction early, preemptively, banishing off the top of the deck a bunch of cards. Runic Destruction also limited to one in today's event. We have Fusion Deployment being ashed. If we add another one, isn't it activatable? You could activate only one per turn. Okay. Now, we could literally thrust a Branded Fusion into the hand and activate it. Should you ever be using your ash on something like a, brand, a, a Fusion Deployment? I'm not so sure about that play. Let's get thrusted. Come to me, Branded Fusion. 
Crescendo could negate the activation, and Retribution, after we discard it, could recycle it back to the hand and activate it again. That's the issue. Maybe negating the activation of Deployment was the better play. Negate the effect. Wait, it banished it. Holy moly. Wait, what? It banishes? Negate and banish. Okay, never mind. We could still recycle it with Kit. If we can get Kit on the field, Kit could add it back to the hand, eh, but that's not happening. Damn. Okay. We are Gursuing the World Wand from the deck to the grave, which could banish itself to summon a banished monster back in the field. Regained returning the banished hug and back in the extra to draw a random card here. Show Khan into the Baron floor. I honestly don't know if we have our battle phase. We don't. Battle phase skipped. Omni negate, negate a monster, negate a monster. We've got about triple disruption here. Gold Sark banishing Mercurio. Mercurio grab Kit. Kit grab the banished branded fusion. Mercurio return back of the deck to draw a random card here. We also have the runic cards, which will trigger the fountain to possibly draw into more disruption. Grabbing Albaz instead. We're going to contact fuse. No, we're not. There, there is a dragon which we could contact fuse into with, but it's better that we use super polymerization. Discard fusing with the Baron de Floor. Baron de Floor would have just negated, but then we would chain anyway. So, you know, it's kind of the same thing here. Summit, but I feel like summon. Uh, yeah, we didn't want to discard a card, so this is fine. This is fine. Brand regain being triggered to reborn the Magna Hut from the graveyard. Magna Hut activating to grab a dragon during the end phase. Goodbye to the Lubellion. We still have double curses. Curse negate. Now, because this is a soft per two turns and you are negating its effect right here, it's now activatable during the next turn. Any good cards being banished here? Double Maxi, double Albaz are banished. You could, of course, use the Lubellion Fusion to return them back on the deck. We're going to be activating our Runic Tip as the Retribution recycles the Lost in the Graveyard. I'm expecting us to draw a bunch of cards here. We're also locking ourselves out of the Battle Phase as soon as we activate the Curses onto the Mirror Jade we did. So we don't have to hold back on the other activations. This is now an opportunity to use the flash fire to wipe out the mirror jade. There is no branded opening to protect the mirror jade from destruction here. And without mirror jade on the field, the brightest blazing branded king is not going to be activatable. So this may be it. Do we do it or what? Artesia is going to be recycling itself in the graveyard back to the hand during the end phase. We're going to banish it instead with our bestial. We have so much card advantage here. What is going on? Leaving up that Mirror Jade, is that a mistake? We could chain the Flash Fire to the Brightest Blazing, but instead the Brightest Blazing is going to be chained to the Flash Fire, or we may just chain the Mirror Jade. Okay, so we're Flash Firing the Quem instead, and the Blazing is going to negate. Yup, there you go, negate the whole field. Full field negate, including our own Quem. So we wanted to deal with Quem, and they dealt with Quem themselves. Dingersu is here on summon. Send a card on the field to the graveyard. Quem is negated. That's not going to work. But uh, did they just trick you to use the bestial? Maybe. Okay. This is so interesting. We activated the... It's, stick with me here. Maybe you don't see it. The bestial chained to the negated Quem. But because you used your bestial early... I could chain Mirror Jade as a cost send Rimbrum, activate Rimbrum, reborn that targeted Albaz in response to the Ball Drake trying to banish it. It will summon, it will discard, it will fuse, but we have another Bissiel to stop it anyway. We're gonna chain curses onto the Mirror Jade, Rimbrum, as I said, in response to the early activated Bissiel, but it did not pay off because of the other copy of a Bissiel. It was almost really good. Chain Link 7. Damn. And do remember that play with Mirror Jade. Because it sends as cost, you could right in that same chain activate the Rimbrum as it's sent as a cost. Mirror Jade activating to wipe out the field during the end phase, which we are going to get to. There's no battle phase. So that end phase field wipe's gonna be something. Chaos Angel gets wiped out, even if it's unaffected from effect monsters. Oh, does that protect the whole field? Damn, Dingersu! You could, if any of your cards would be destroyed, you detach a material instead of your entire field being destroyed. Wow. The Chaos Angel was not protected from Mirror Jade. 
but now it is protected from monster effects. Activated effects only, that is. Alubur searching, Branded Regain triggering the Druus Swarm. The Ball Drake is going to chain block the Druus Swarm from being summoned. I guess maybe we should have summoned in the extra monster zone, the Chaos Angel. So that regained was for nothing. It was an oops, and we undid the oops. But now we're going to be dealing with a Branded Banishment. Branded Banishment is going to be summoning nothing. <laughs> nothing summonable from the grave here. The Titanclad and the Rinbrum were not properly summoned, so you can't summon them. But if the Alibur goes to the graveyard, we could summon that. But the Dingers is going to send the Banishment instead before it's activatable. And I do think we have our battle phase now. Holy moly, this deck is nuts. Orcist, Bistial, Runic. This is a deck. Just like that. Lethal damage. Orcus is back. What is restricted in Orcus? I don't think anything. I think it's fully unrestricted. GG bricked. Ah, uh, hmm. Yeah, that, uh, that happens. Damn. What the heck? Okay. Quem is sending the Cartesia from the deck here. I would say that this deck does not do that well against Max C, but when they don't have Max C, we're popping off. Chaining Super Poly before the Quem activates to reborn the Cartesia. Let's get Fuse and Tragedy and Quem's gonna give us a good follow up. Could give us Alibur to summon next turn to get that branded fusion. Okay, we have the Gary here. It's more difficult to chain link block the fountain from an Ash because you can't hug in chain link two to the fountain because Huggin can't activate anymore. Nor can Gary. Gary and Huggin cannot protect you from Ash. Get ready. Focus up. Pop it. Search it. Alubur. Attempt to draw two here. Ash is going to be negating, as it should. We do have a Freezing Curses as our only disruption. We cannot summon a body into the extra monster zone as long as the Gary is there. Setting the Freezing Curses in case the Fountain gets disrupted early. Albion's going to draw a card here by sending a Retribution from the deck to the Grave, randomly grabbing into the High Spirits. Freezing Curses will be negating the Alibur. We're going to chain Branded and High Spirits to get the Serenir into the Graveyard, which will send a Branded Fusion, which will be added to the hand through the Retribution. We got Branded Fusion. Grab a Cartesia, which will special summon if we have an Albaz in the graveyard, which we do not. So this is going to be the Brand Fusion play. Runic Fountain needs to get good disruption. We have to. We need something to deal with the Branded Fusion. We did not. We did not. As I saw, ah, yeah, yeah, see? Like he knows. I know, he knows, you now know. Branded Fusion back to the hand, and that's the scoop. Damn. Branded uh, Bricked, install one. Good job to both of you. Thank you for the great match. It was top tier. Let's keep on going. Okay, we, uh, yeah, that sucks. We, you know, we have a lot of hand traps though. Valor, unlike Ash, can be activated more than once. So that is a good negate, valid negate. Negate the Ariana, but do not Ash. That's the difference. Imperm Valor is okay, but not Ash. Save Ash for the big welcome. Smack him for 16. Even for welcome, it could be good. Big welcome and welcome. Because if the welcome summons lovely, then lovely will make it so you can't ash the big welcome. So it is a gamble. Activating Maxi. We could chain the delicious memory to this. We are going to activate Welcome Labyrinth in response. Chaining Maxi to the Welcome Labyrinth. We could solemn strike the Maxi. I don't think we should though. The Eradicator. Eradicator's not gonna be doing much here. Cause you could just chain your spells to the Eradicator. Okay, Purely Street making the Lily untargetable. Not negating and destroying with the Solemn Strike. That is quite interesting. Forcing out the activation of the Sleepy Memory. We're also gonna be destroying the My Friend Purely, so we should discard it instead. You're just wiping out the field spell here as the Purely adds another card. And it's not add, it's just draw, right? Any cards drawn and that were currently on the field or in the hand. So adding does not get destroyed. We get to keep that. Very nice. Purely reveal the happy memory going into the happiness. This can attack four times now. Attack number one. Oh, gosh. 
We have lethal damage. If it weren't for the solemn strike, we actually had gain. No way. Negate and destroy the happiness during the damage step. That was four attacks and reductions over the Ariana. Main phase two, we are plumping it up. Nice and plump. We're gonna be attaching two more materials. Now, the way to get the fifth material, do we have five materials? What are we doing? We're Zeusin? We're Zeusin. The way to get the fifth material would be if we had a beauty. Oh, we getting the Biru. <laughs> We're out. So if we, if we don't have another quick play spell to equip onto the plump, you then equip a beauty as one of the cards you're equipping, and then you suck up your opponent's monster or back row to be the fifth material to make the x Nor. Damn. Labyrinth taking game number one. Both of these decks are going to get future support. The new Labyrinth monster, the new trap that works really well in Labyrinth, the E-Purely Exceed that works with Sleepy, the E-Purely Nor. Let's go, let's go. Purely, we don't have to deal with any hand traps. We have an unhindered turn one. Let's see what we randomly get adding. Purely revealing the pretty to make a monster negate here. And of, of, wow, we grabbed the delicious instead. Ain't no way. Did we forget to attach delicious or we want to make a plump? Maybe we want to make a plump. We're going to get nice and plump. Randomly revealing that sleepy. Ain't no way. Now we have draw four cards during the standby phase. That's wild. Plump, draw four plus monster negate. That's going to be the game winner right there. Suck it up. Suck it up again. Leave it on the field. Don't even X purely nor it. Hold my Jesus. We keep, we keep the leap in the hand. We don't discard it, of course. Monster negate. Wait, we are making... We're not getting greedy. You could have got greedy. What are you afraid of? Isn't it safe against Labyrinth to draw four? <laughs> we're still out of here. It, it's, it's still an auto win anyway. Okay, let's go. Very well done. What decks does it not feel safe to use purely leap in their standby phase for? Uh, any deck, I, I think against, not against, even against Vanquish Soul, maybe, well, I think it would be even more of a reason to play around the Kurikara. Draw to it, plump, summon X purely Nord, then don't draw again to play around Kurikara, is what I'm thinking. That, you know, be wild, crazy foresight to play around it, but if we saw it, that would have been great. Ash negate pot of E against Labyrinth. Is that correct? Maybe. I say maybe. I think I would probably still negate Big Welcome, actually. All right, Torby discarding the lady, setting up the Big Welcome Labyrinth, but we don't have a Ku Clock to make it activatable right here, right now. We do have Maxi to draw one off of it. This is where we're gonna have to go into Happy. And we can only go into Happy. We can't summon Lily. We can't summon anything else. Happy, spin back the Gozen's the only play. Are we randomly gonna get it though? No. So we could summon another Purely from the deck though. Sure. Another Purely, can't summon Lily. We can't guarantee the Happy in our hand. Happy? No Happy, but we could try again. We'll try again. Discard another card. Princess Sprite is a light. We could go into Zeus. Ain't no way. Maxi. The big welcome's gonna summon Lovely, then destroy Princess Sprite in the battle phase. Aw, oh, damn. Wait, no. Wait, we can't do that. Correction, because can't summon Lovely, return Lovely. That's not an actual play. So yeah, we didn't really have a play. Huh. Zeus. Wait, we couldn't downward. So Imperm does stop it. Downard's dark. We couldn't get the fourth material to double wipe around the Imperm. Well, negate. We could still summon regular purely though. Try to, and try to make a happy, but now it's main phase two. Uh, let's just go to the next turn. Let's just wait, let's wait. Let's wait up. What, <laughs> Modar? You don't want to play? You're sitting on Gozen, mate. Did you really connection fail? Come on now. Got mad love searching for the snow devil, which could wipe out the entire field of monsters protecting your own from battle, card effect destruction that is. Raisin grabbing the Jowlong, revealing the Jowlong. 
then not triggering the jail long we're gonna be okay we're special summoning it and then we're going to be searching we're gonna return back with the borger borger reveal a dark to draw one and let's go what do we have here we have Snow Devil wipe out the field. We have Raisin destroy a column. We could search for the Caesar, which could destroy a card on the field. We have about triple disruption plus the private Ash. I don't think we revealed it. Let's see what happens. Huh. It is a Phantom Knight deck. That's something. Let's go. Drop the lit within the draw phase, negating the Rock of the Vanquisher from summoning a monster from the hand. We could still main phase Borger though, but we can't vanquish summon. Now the Snow Devil not only destroys the field of monsters, but it could also summon the Raisin, which will grab the Caesar, which will then summon. Okay. Ash negate the foolish burial mate. We're gonna triple tactics thrust any spell card from our deck to our hand. Is it gonna be a good one? I don't know what we're playing really. Grass, oh my. We're gonna mill a ton of cards here, just like that. Mill, 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 five at a time. What did we accomplish? Makonko Dance is gonna be reborning a Ha Ray from the graveyard. There is a lot of Makonko in this, right? We got Take Tomborg. We have the Phantom Knight Traps, which could reborn a Phantom Knight from the graveyard. We could banish the boots, grab a trap, and that will trigger the Phantom Knight Scales to reborn from the graveyard. Let's do it. Ha-Ray did not trigger to search, so maybe we're not playing that many Makonkos. We're gonna be using the Magna Hut to banish the Phantom Knight Torn Scale Ghost Bell, negate the Bestial from banishing, so it will in fact summon. All right, let's go. Come forth. And Torn Scale needs a card to discard to then get another card. So, okay, there it is, that's the card. The boots will be grabbing the wing, discard the wing to send from the deck the cloak. Cloak could banish to grab the boots. Boots could special summon onto the fields. We're grabbing a ragged gloves instead. We have not used up our normal summon. So that is it, we got the Binny. Binny send a level three monster from the deck to the graveyard, which will be the scale. This will be the wing banished to summon the gloves from the graveyard back onto the fields. We're going to be triggering the scales to come forth and summon. We're now going to exceed into X Saber Invoker. Invoker summon from the deck. What? What the heck? Heroic Challenger Morning Star, which is a warrior to make I sold. Ragged Gloves sending from the deck to the graveyard a fog blade. He overcooked. <laughs> I ordered raw. Not well done, you donkey. Danger, never ash the danger. They could just activate again. Danger is normally supposed to discard another card, then draw a card, then special summon. Unfortunately, that did not happen. <laughs> Jeez, that's, uh, what does this deck do? Okay, Azalea doesn't do anything. Huh. He, uh, cross out, designate, negate the ash. That is something. Okay. So we're gonna be stopping them from overcooking their turn. This is good. Negate. Jack Slayo PKs a riot. Jack Slayo did come back with his PK. It is on the site. You should check out what his deck looks like recently. Got the Raisin in the same column with it as the Azalea searching for the Jalong, revealing a fire in dark, wiping out that Azalea. We don't want a special summon too much unless we could lethal. Ooh, off the top of the deck, Gamma. Do we Gamma? Yes, we do. Negate and destroy. The Gamma would have very likely been activatable on our own turn so that we could have made maybe a Stardust Excel Dragon. It could have been a combo starter. No, we don't play any Synchros. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Uh, passing again? We don't have Max C this. Waylay, you got in the top 16, so you did do something to get here. You just bricked for game one and two in the top 16 once you actually got here. I, you know, I'm very sorry, my friend. It sucks that this deck did this to you. I wanted to see what more you could do. Now, Borger is gonna be able to finish up this game. 1500 burn for lethal, just like that. 2-0 victory. Let's keep on watching more duels. Focus up. We have the Achichi being negated by Ash. And that actually does something. That did work. It pretty much shut down the whole turn. 
Search for the field spell, which is not going to be activatable. We're going to be ending. Okay. Well, we do have Max C, which will be negated by called by or cross out. <laughs> but we have no plays anyway. Well, we're Labyrinth, so it's not that funny. Reborn from the graveyard during the end phase, triggering the Achichi, grabbing Picari. Big welcome. Could get Ash, but we have negates for the Ash. Cross out versus cross out. It can't cross out the cross out anymore. Negate. Impermanent big welcome. Big welcome is not so good if we don't have a body on the field. Fenrir being limited to one possibly also is a hit to Labyrinth. I think Fenrir and Labyrinth was really good. It was giving you fodder for discarding with the furniture. It was returnable with the big welcome on the field. We got Hikari searching. So is the Wicked. Wicked will be searching for the tuner. The Picari will be grabbing for the I Meet You, which will be grabbing any monster from the deck here. Buaru sending Gachiri from the deck to the graveyard, which will be rebornable with our Splash Mage. We have the Wind Pegasus, which is going to be activatable to non-target pop back row cards here. Return back, the Lady activates, summon the Lady back onto the field here. Wind Pegasus with the non-target. We're going to Imperm negate, but we also want to chain the Lady to the Imperm. So could we chain anything? We can't Imperm the Imperm because Lady can't be targeted. We already, we did not max C. Lady is not getting blocked. Okay. Wait, why didn't we max C? Did we? we? We didn't call by a max C. Why didn't we max C the big welcome? I don't understand. What happened there? Transcode Talker. Reborn from the graveyard, a Link Monster only. The call by the grave is going to banish that Link Monster target. We could still Splash Mage summon the Gachiri from the graveyard, possibly. But summoning a transcode is generally what we would want to be summoning. Afterward, we're going to I meet you, reveal a fire, grab the Achichi, which will be special summoned through the effect of the Ignister Island. Not using Splash Mage yet. Now, reborn from the graveyard, Buaru instead to now make a Dark Templar. Dark Templar, if not chain link blocked, I'll tell you when to chain link block it. We're going to be adding Gachiri in the graveyard back to the hand through the effect of Doyen. This is where you block. Activate. And this has to be the direct chain link to move on over to summon three from the grave. Otherwise, it could only summon two. So if you just cross out nothing, it could block it. But we could be waiting with the Daruma, which could send all link monsters on the field to the grave. OK, we didn't block. We're waiting with Daruma. And we have to do it. We could chain the Daruma to the Gachiri unless they make an access code talker. So once Gachiri hits the field, we have to Daruma before it gets sent to the grave through Axis Code Talker. Wait. This works through Gachiri. Gachiri makes the monster unaffected from card effects. Daruma does not send it through a card effect. It makes the player send the card. So even if he makes Axis Code Talker with Gachiri on it, you'll still send it. Please wait. Just wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait all the way. Let them go all the way. This is going to be the biggest Daruma I've ever seen. We're not going to be able to negate it. Terra Hurts and the Fusion Monster would be able to negate it. Otherwise, I don't think we have anything to stop this. We could, we could wait for the absolute last moment. This is why imperming the Pegasus was good. It's not activatable. Oh, yeah. You see the... I got too excited. Damn. You see the shadow? The shadow means that the card was set there for a turn. The Daruma was set this turn. Damn. Uh, this is where you face the clock in tournaments. I see a lot of people do this in TCG. You ask them, hey, how much time do we have in the round? The opponent goes, huh? And then you just whoop, and then Daruma. Don't do that, don't do that. I never did that, other people did that. G Golem, reborn from the graveyard, transcode talker. Come forth. It is sus that someone's always facing the clock though, right? They're, they're definitely a cheater if they do that. Link decoder, reborn itself back in the field. We have Firewall Dragon, add back a Chi-Chi in the graveyard, back to our hand. Link this up into the Firewall Dragon Singularity. Singularity is now here. Why is it taking you so long to lethal? Is Ignister the new Dragon Link? 
I, I think so. We, we traded Dragon Link for Ignister. Why? Come forth and summon. We have double monster in the gate. Gachiri come forth and summon. Singularity returning two cards in the field back to the hand. Cross out should have chain link blocked the Dark Templar. I think we would have lost anyway, though. This is where you put the Axis Code Talker on the higher chain link of Gachiri. And then your opponent cannot chain to it. You're completely unaffected from everything except from the Daruma, which would have sent it to the graveyard. Popping it. 8300 unaffected. Lethal damage. Very nice. 8k access code talker that is right singularity link six ariana with no hand traps to stop any of this lovely is summonable through the big welcome but not the regular welcome and we got the setup so we're gonna be able to pop any card in the field non-targeting through the field spell and we're also going to pop any card in the hand or field non-targeting also so double non-targeting poppage is the way that's our play let's go we we don't drink but it's not for any real reason we just uh we just don't if you could tell me a good drink to get drunk on then you know i will look into it and get it probably circular send the sigma come forth and special summon do we call by the grave yes we do fingering the sigma banish and negate now you're not going to be able to trigger your circular searching for an equation so that stops about two bodies hitting the field. I think that was pretty good. We're not done. We're gonna big welcome lovely, pop the circular, pop a card in the hand, and then still lose because they got Picari and Achichi. Ain't no way. Torby being triggered to come forth and summon from the grave. Yeah, we're anything we pop, we still lose. We still have the normal song. Yeah, it's over. All right. A Chi Chi into Doyen, <laughs> link off into the Dark Infant, grab the Field Spell, Field Spell, Special Summon, the Doyen. Doyen grab back the Picari, which will be activatable, you didn't even stop it. Cybers Wicked is here, summon the Picari, Picari gets searching for a further extender. I, maybe we only have Idol Reborn as the extender. We have I Meet You to search our deck for any monster. We got the Gachiri on top of this, ain't no way. Pop in the hand, pop in the field, and like didn't even happen. We have full uninterrupted combo. Please chain link block this. He activates, but you already did. No, you didn't. Okay, chain to the thing. Do it. Yes, thank you. All right. It's just that you didn't do it with cross out earlier, but you're going to lose that duel anyway. Okay, only summon two instead of three. Pegasus get popping. Uru's gonna reborn the Picari, pop in the back row and the field spell. We're making Firewall Dragon. It's gonna take us a while to lethal. Shokan into the Crystal Heart. Reborn the Transcode Talker with the Crystal Heart. I mean, that's game right there. You could just, nope. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we had game and we're gonna keep on going. Reborn. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Double. Will. You're under circular, only one monster can attack. Okay, I forgive you, I, you didn't have game. So you needed to do this, you need one monster to be game. Do not forget, circular locks them into only one monster attacking. 8300, lethal damage. All right, very good. The new D-Link is here, it is Ignister. Does this mean Dragon Link is actually dead? Raisin, I would give it at least two weeks. Maybe if there's no Dragon Link next week. This is concerning, but not definitive. There's also other tournaments that are going to be happening this week. We could check their results too. I don't know if they're going to be abiding by the new ban list though. I think most tournaments do the new ban list early. All right. What I love is how incompetent Konami is where they try to do big community events after an announced ban list using the older ban list, so no one cares. Xiao Long, reveal double fire, search in our deck for a snow devil here. We're going to be able to wipe out the entire field of monsters, making ours indestructible except the Rock of the Vanquisher. Jiao Long in the draw phase, searching it up for our Caesar Valius. We have the unexpected die, a really good starter. 
Caesar Valleys is going to be spinning the jail long back to our hand, and we do have the effect to get popping. Uh, do we do it now? Because if we activate an effect that tributes a monster on the activation, you can't chain the Caesar to pop the Con Con. You're off the field. You cannot respond. And we do have the Earth, Dark, and Fire to get popping. This is it. I, I think we have to do it early. Bruh. Isn't this tribute, tribute, tribute? You're gone, you can't chain, no chain, you're gone. Uh-oh, wait, we didn't even deal, we didn't even care? Okay, we're dealing with the Rock of the Vanquisher instead. Cause I, I guess we didn't activate that yet, right? We didn't activate it. All right, get popping. The Con Con's not gonna be able to set up a Glamour or a Ricochet. Snow Devil to wipe up the field. Reveal three attributes, burn for 1800, summon the raisin, wipe the field. Very nice. Should we have taken out the Caesar instead? We did all of that, and now we're gonna start our real combo here, where the combo starts now. Full combo. <laughs> Dry ass. Borger returned the raisin back to the hand. Borger can draw a card, maybe draw in another hand trap. When do we Ghost Bell? Ghost Bell the Twin, right? Twin, summon Loki, Ghost Bell negate. So now, wait, isn't this chain link blocking it? Yeah, you actually can't Ghost Bell. Nope, can't do it. So when do you Ghost Bell? Melius, right? Melius, Ghost Bell, reborn from the graveyard. Healer get healing, making the Jasmine. We cannot Ghost Bell. Dry ass healer, trigger the Jasmine, searching our deck. And then we're gonna be tributing a monster also, grabbing a Mudon. Tribute special summon for the deck, our pedal, pedal searching. Still can't go spell, tribute special summon, search our deck for a Con Con, which we have not activated yet to set up into our back row, a Glamour. We already tributed an opponent's monster, so we have to tribute our own. Tribute search for Princess and Primula. Activate special summon Primula. Special summon Princess. Uh-huh. You could go spell this, but that would be bad. Don't do that. Can you go spell its other effect? I don't think so. It, it attaches a monster, a card from the graveyard onto your monster. Does that go spellable? If you're adding a card, special summoning a card, or banishing a card, no, you can't go spell the other effect. All right. Princess is going to negate. Wait, didn't we? Oh, new copy of Con Con. The second Con Con could tribute their field again. Double Con Con, double tribute. That part of the effect is not a hard once per turn. Remember it. Magna Hut banishing the Rock of the Vanquisher from the graveyard to come forth and summon. The effect of setting a Rick a Speller Trap, that's the hard ones per turn. Come back to me, Snowdrop, which already activates effect to Special Summon. But because we didn't tribute our Strena, we didn't get the effect of Strena. Melius Reborn from the Graveyard. I think that was the best Ghost Bell. Because what is this? Is Snowdrop really even a big deal? Returning back the Borger, burning for 2,500 to do so, we now have a Cactus Bouncer. While another plant monster is on the field, neither player could special summon monsters. That's huge. We do have Princess to negate and tribute with Con Con, so we have to summon and not activate. But then Borger could spin us back. I mean, we just lose. <laughs> we can't. We try to battle, we get spun back, we activate, we get tributed. Damn, it's over. Uh, we're activating anyway. Okay, can't do that. Goodbye. <laughs> can't, can't stake your soul. Can't special summon. It is the plant fossil Dyna. All right, wrap this up. No bestial. Can't summon even if we did. Lethal damage. All right, we love floodgates. Take your soul, Ash, yeah, reveal fire. It's like high risk, high reward. They could have a, another raisin and it worked. You just don't get access to the raisin. And it worked so damn well. Holy moly. Snow Devil could not destroy the field. Ooh, but that Max C is nasty. 
how much can we cook under our drone lockbird? Can we cook? We could set up a ricochet instead of searching. I don't think we droll the ash. Okay, we're done. Oh my Jesus. We tribute off our Loki and just end it. Steak, you're selling the raisin again onto the field, grabbing our Borger. Borger has no dark monster to reveal to get drawn. We're gonna raisin reveal a fire, summon our Jalong off of that reveal. Borger return back the raisin. We got some damage on the field here, 4,900. Main phase two, Rock of the Vanquisher is what I'm expecting here. First, we're gonna be burning for 1,500. That's a lot of damage. Could not leave them at 15 for, wait, that's game. <laughs> How silly! 15 and then just 400. Oh my gosh. What the hell? Game. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. Wow. Jialong Borger open field game. That's it? Just those two monsters is lethal damage? That's crazy. On con, glimmer our pedal to our hand here. Let's speed this up. Pedal's gonna be searching for the Mudon, Mudon, tribute the pedal, set up a ricochet with the con con to tribute an opponent's monster plus take control of another. We're gonna be triggering the Primula special summoning off of a tribute. And what did we accomplish here? We have not even a princess. How, what? Okay, no princess negate. We have just tribute a monster to take control of a monster. All max C. Okay. Well, called by will be stopped. Right, there you go. Called by negate. Just like that. So we don't even have max C. We just have the ricochet. Can that be good enough? We have non target tribute to target. And whatever gets targeted, we can return back to the hand with the Caesar Valley or a Borger. Let's get a good draw two here. Pantera could force out the activation of the sheet. Pantera reveal, destroy the column, tributing our own Primula to then take control of the Pantera, which it's a special summon. We have not even committed whatsoever. Jalong triggering on a separate chain link, stake your soul, reveal to summon a Borger. Holy moly, Vanquish Soul is popping off here. Grabbing a Jalong, we could reveal fire and dark, wiping out the column, get destroyed. Link this up into the Rock of the Vanquisher, which can add from the graveyard our special summon from the hand. We're gonna called by the grave onto the raisin. Damn, can't change our mind. We had to activate one of the effects here and it was adding from the grave. I think summoning Mad Love actually just would have been good. It, not even because of the called by, but Mad Love search, right? I, I, I feel like we screwed that up. And Borger's gone during the end phase due to the Stake Your Soul. We did make it to the main phase to activate a Rock of the Vanquisher, which could be, oh my gosh. So you may be thinking, why didn't he activate Rock before getting tributed? You can't. Turn player priority in the main phase, they get to activate a card before you. So if this is only activatable in the main phase and they don't set a card, summon a card, activate another card that's not tributing you, there was no way to do it. There was no misplay there. Just couldn't do it. Borger return back the Jiao Long. We're gonna con con set up into the back row. We're drawing into a hand trap, hopefully. We called by the grave their max C. Turning off our max C. We can't max C. <laughs> we can't shift her. We can't max C. And they're doing full combo on us. Oh my gosh. Where did this go wrong? What the heck happened? Vanquish Soul was cooking. The called by screwed it up. The, the, the rock trying to add back the raisin. Had we just summoned Mad Love, we could have done something. We could have had the Snow Devil. We could uh, reveal three, wipe the fields. Oh my Jesus. The Sunvine Sewing protects what? Just the Link Monster, right? Can I read the sewing without the thing screwing up? This says if a plant, I can't even read it. Let me just bring up the site. All right. Sunvine sewing. Now take off the filters here. The sunvine sewing says if a plant link 
would be destroyed, you could banish from the grave instead. So we would have to Snow Devil early. We'd have to wipe it up early. All right. And did we have game? Did we have like Borger, Borger, Snow Devil for game if we also summon that? I, I feel like that would have been game, right? Wait, there's another turn? We couldn't lethal 2,500 life? Let's go. What are the disruptions? The Bangle answer could return a monster back to the hand, but then you take damage. And if you take too much damage, you're gonna lose to the Snow Devil burn or the Borger burn. So we could spin back. We could activate to tribute a monster on the field. Do we have a princess in the grave? We should. Princess could tribute a monster to negate a monster. So we have about three disruptions. Let's go. Can we play through three? Road off the top of the deck. We got our Raisin. Summoning our Mad Love. Reveal to reduce. Okay. It wasn't lower defense to spin back. We have Jalong being triggered to summon. We have Rock of the Vanquisher to add a Vanquish Soul in the Graveyard back to our hand. We're going to negate and tribute the Jalong with the Con Con. So this being triple disruption pretty much turned into four. So we're going to tribute and negate. We still have the Bangla Dancer Lancer and we still have the Teardrop Tribute. We still have two more disruption. Okay. But, uh... Isn't it over? Teardrop could tribute within the end phase, even. <laughs> you can't. Oh my gosh. Chaining Max C to the pedal summoning. What could we even draw into during the end phase? Wow. Rika clapping up Vanquish Soul. Decimation. And just like that, lethal damage. Very well done. Very well done. And already on field Con Con, countering the Rock of the Vanquisher. You're able to tribute it before they could even activate. That is great. That is the end of the top 16. I appreciate you for getting this far in the video. It greatly supports me. YouTube checks that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, even if you have it on in the background. With that said, I'll be seeing you in the next video, top eight grand finale. Let's go.